Welcome to Sunny Day Stamping. I'm Julie Baca. Sign up for my weekly email to receive free project sheets and updates on sales. Today's card is a quick and easy card. It's got this really cool gradient ombre thing going on, which is really easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now this looks really intricate, but you know what? We're just using one die to get this effect. Um, you will need a cut and emboss machine to cut this out, but this fits in the mini cut and emboss machine, which is on sale in the month, the month of March 2022. So if this has been on your wish list, now is the time to get that. I'll put a link down in the description. Let's get started. So here's a close up of the card we're gonna make. You can see my mistakes here. This mistake was made because I stamped it after I glued it onto my card, which is like the cardinal rule, but for some reason I keep breaking it. So make sure to stamp first and then glue it um, because then you can uh, save your card. So we're going to be using this flowering tulips bundle today, the stamp set and the die set. When you buy them together, you get 10% off. So if you know you're going to you want the stamp set and the die set, go ahead and buy them at the same time to save you a little bit of money. Um, we're going to be using the stamp set to decorate the inside of our cards. And at the end, I'll show you a bunch of different um, ideas I have for decorating the inside of the card. For the die set, we're like I said, we're only using this one die that fits in the mini emboss machine. All the dies in this set actually fit in that mini that's on sale right now. But I'll show you um, a couple weeks ago, I did a project using the other dies in that set. I mean, these are just gorgeous. And then I also made this card using this stamp set. Um, and so I'll link a playlist of all these tulip cards up there. Here are the other supplies that you're going to need for today's card. So you can see it's just really simple. I've got these all linked over on my website, sunnydaystamping.com. So you can purchase them there. Um, I also will have all of the measurements. And I'm going to run through those real quick. So this is a card base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Now we're going to be using crushed curry as our accent um, color for in our example. But I've got more examples to show you at the end in case crushed curry is not your color. <laughs> Um, so we're going to need um, a, this colored cardstock is five and a quarter by four. Then you're going to need two white cardstocks at five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And then these are five and an eighth inch wide, um, or I'm sorry, long. And then this is two inch and that is two and a half inch. These black matte docks are optional. You will need a blending brush to make that gradient. Now, if you'd prefer all of these measurements, instructions, links to the video, links to all the supplies, all on one page, I send these out to my email subscribers. Um, so you can subscribe to my email. There's a link down below. Um, I send these out on Fridays. So if you're watching this video and it's past when I sent this out, please contact me. I am happy to send these out to you. So we're going to start with my favorite part, and that's creating the gradient with these blending brushes. These are actual brushes. These are not sponges, so they just work awesome. Now, I've got some tips for doing this. Now, once you ink up your pad, your brush, you don't want to put it directly on your paper because you're going to get a dark spot like that. So I always start off on my scratch paper, and then I bring the color on real gentle at first so that you don't get a dark um, brush mark. You don't really want that. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to create a gradient from dark to light. I do want some white up at the top. Now you don't really need to color right here because look at all the cardstock that's going to go over on top of that. So I'm going to leave that alone, but I'm going to start my dark here. I'm using pretty firm pressure now that I know that I'm not going to mark up my paper. Um, and then I'm going to go lighter towards the top. So now that the white piece is colored, we're going to color the smaller of these strips. Now I know this is backwards. When you look into the distance, really it's, things should get darker, but I don't know. I just really liked seeing the gradient on this top sheet, uh, the top cardstock there. So we're not gonna color this one, but we're gonna add some ink to this one. And I want this to be pretty dark. I really wanna see it. So, um, now, obviously, you do not need to use this color. Pick your favorite color and use that cardstock and that ink. Stampin' Up's inks and cardstocks match perfectly. So if you 
if you have an ink color that you like and you get that same cardstock, it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be the same. Now, if you want a, an even deeper contrast, like you could use a different color ink on your cardstock. Now I am bringing this color way down because I want my flowers. Let me put this up here. I want my flowers to be dark and then I want them to get lighter. I want the top of where I'm gonna stamp that sentiment to be dark, but I wanna see a gradient going um, into the actual color of the cardstock. So now you're gonna grab that die out of your die set. Oh, you may see that there's some uh, cardstock still stuck in here. You can, um, if, if you do have that happen, you can tap it out like this. And if it doesn't all come out, you can use a toothpick on the back side and poke it out. There, Stamp It Up also sells a tool that um, gets it out even faster. Okay, so this is going to be the tulips in the back. And so when I put this on my paper, I'm going to want to, um, you know, have these up at the top, not at the very top. I don't want the tulips getting cut off. And you can, you can orient this however you want. But what I liked was for these two to be different. So I'm going to orient this one. Um, I'm going to line this up on the left and cut it. And then when I cut this one, I'm going to line it up on the right and cut it. I want, do you see how this has a um, kind of a hill here? I want this to leave me a nice big spot to stamp my sentiment. So that's why I'm going to have that on this side. So run these through your cut and emboss machine. So when you get these out of your stamp or your cut and emboss machine, you know, they may... All the pieces may fall out like that. Some of them might get stuck. So I just kind of tap them, flick them, <laughs> use my little, uh, um, what the heck do you call these? Toothpick to poke them out until you've got them all out there. Now, oh, this is what I wanted to happen. So on your die sets, let me get this out of the way so you can see, you can trim these off if there are little, you know, pieces that you don't like, or like, let's say I didn't want that there, you can trim those out to make that look just right. Okay, do you remember this mistake I made on my, <laughs> on my example card? We're gonna not do that this time by stamping right now before I glue this on my paper. Now, let me show you a little trick for getting your sentiments to be straight. I line up my sentiment on my grid paper and then I take my block and I line that up on the grid paper too. Not like I just did, goodness gracious. Try that again. Let's see, I'm not over my camera. There we go. So now when I go to stamp this, I know this is straight and it's gonna make it much easier. Now this sentiment is in that flowering tulip stamp set. Hmm, I don't really like how that, oops, I bumped my camera. Don't really like how that uh, went right there so I'm gonna try to stamp this again now if I had a stamparatus I could um, that allows you to stamp exactly over where you stamped before let's see oh my gosh well I, ca I got lucky here but that wasn't lined up I am gonna do this all over again there we go I'm back it's all better <laughs> I try not to be a perfectionist with crafting but you know what it's just in me so I had to redo that. Okay, so now we're, now we're back. And we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these on our paper. These should be the exact width of your paper. And if not, let's say it is overlapping a little bit. After you glue it, just take it and trim it. It's not gonna be a problem at all. Now, as you can see, I am being lazy. I am not putting glue on those tulips, but you know what? I just don't think it matters. And I think it actually is kind of cool to have these all sticking up. Um, it would just take a while to glue those down and that is not my favorite thing. <laughs> now you're gonna take your card base, burnish it real good with your bone folder and glue that on. I think that black background just makes everything just really pop. And I hope you can see in the camera just the really great gradient, the contrast between the original color of the cardstock and where we made it darker, and then how we did the same thing on our white paper, bringing that gradient up. I think it's so interesting, simple, but so fun. 
Okay, so you can leave it like that, but I am gonna add some little matte black dots. I just think this adds just a little, little bit of special touch to this. Now I'm gonna do these. I taught I was taught to do these in three, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so let's decorate the inside of our card. I'm just gonna do just since we've got our blending brush out anyway. I'm going to just put a little bit of, I'm just going to put a little bit of color on here before we stamp. Now I'm going to just use one of the tulips out of that um, stamp set just because I'm too lazy to get the other ones out, uh, but these look so good. Now with this stem, you can actually flip it around to get your stem to go the other way. This, this goes both ways, which is so convenient. Same thing with the leaves that are in that um, stamp set. They will go both directions, so I can turn it this way now. I think I'll put a little leaf in the middle. Now, before we glue this into our card, let's go ahead and decorate our envelope the same way. <laughs> you guys, I made another mistake. Um, you're supposed to put the colored cardstock underneath here. Now this is all stuck down. It looks just fine, but let me show you the examples where I did remember to put this on. So this is in Bermuda Bay. I used Bermuda Bay cardstock and inks. This is the polished pink. All of these stamps and sentiments are out of that same stamp set. So if you get that bundle, you can make all of these cards. Oh, sorry, that one was real red, and this one is gorgeous grape. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about today's project or any of the products I'm using, please leave me a comment. I love to help you out with that. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. You can also subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified about my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a sunny day.